thank you sir uh, good morning everyone uh, today i'll be presenting my case uh, she is an 11 year old female uh, born of a non consanguineous marriage full term lscs birth with no significant perinatal issues she had average school performance with no known comorbidities she had history of fever and sore throat for 2 to 3 days one month back followed by abdominal pain for 15 days vomiting for 15 days which was followed by gross hematuria for 4 to 5 days after which she presented to sgpgi she had no history of any yellowish discoloration of eyes or urine any diarrheal illness any headache focal neurological deficits or seizures any history of impedigo skin infection any skin rash joint pain oral ulcers photosensitivity or myalgias there was no history of any drug intake before the onset of symptoms or any drug allergies she had no history of any decreased urine output or pedal edema at presentation on examination she was conscious oriented to time place and person her height and weight were within 50th to 75th centile her blood pressures were slightly raised they were 132 by uh, 98 which was above the 95th centile uh, she had pallor present and rest of the general and systemic examination was within normal limits uh, so this is the brief overview of what happened to our patient outside our hospital she had uh, the symptom onset followed by uh, being treated conservatively with iv antibiotics antiemetics and ppis and then she presented to sgpgi her outside investigations revealed that she had uh, Uh, she had anemia with thrombocytopenia uh, with hemoglobin of 9.0 uh, and a platelet count of 45000 she had a creatinine level of 5.1 and her urine showed 3 plus of protein and 40 to 60 rbcs uh, her uh, tropical workup uh, tropical fever workup was all negative initial labs in sgpgi revealed that on 14th of march she had hemoglobin of 9.6 and platelet of 45000 uh, with an elevated reti count of 11% schistocytes of 8% on peripheral blood smear and an ldh of more than 5000 pointing to a diagnosis of uh, hemolytic anemia uh, she had uh, creatinine levels of 4.49 uh, her urine showed 2 plus of protein and 15 to uh, 10 to 15 rbcs her serum albumin was 3.09 and uh, her usg showed bilateral normal sized kidneys autoimmune workup revealed that ana was 1 plus fine speckled c3 was low which was 47 and c4 was normal which was 25.4 dct and ict were negative and aso titers were less than 200 so we found that we were dealing with a case of non immune intravascular hemolytic anemia with thrombocytopenia with schistocytes pointing to a diagnosis of fragmentation syndrome but our case showed no features of any cns involvement any drug intake any prostatic heart valves uh, she had no history of uh, suggestive of sepsis or dic she had no uh, history of any diarrheal diarrheal illness preceding the symptoms rather she had features of renal involvement with uh, with hypocomplementemia in the form of low c3 that pointed to a diagnosis of atypical hus so we further investigated our case and found that adm ts13 levels were normal and her anti complement factor hsa was raised which was 521 further on uh, genetic analysis she was found to have homozygous deletion of complement factor h regulatory protein 3 and 1 So as of now we were having a syndromic diagnosis of RPRF and etiological diagnosis of uh, atypical HUS which was anti CFH positive and also had mutations for complement factor regulatory proteins 3 and 1 with a pathological diagnosis of TMA So this is the brief overview of what ha what has happened uh, with the patient uh, during the uh, hospitalization in SGPGI once being investigated thoroughly and being diagnosed with atypical HUS uh, she was given uh, immunosuppression in the form of prednisolone and mycophenolate mofetil over the course she had received uh, 14 cycles of plex and four doses of eculizumab uh, so these are the trends as we can see that uh, the patient had uh, Uh, the patient had anemia thrombocytopenia with elevated histocyte and retic count and ldh uh, over the course she was given five cycles of plex uh, but her platelet counts were still uh, falling and reached an adr of 30k and uh, then uh, she was given first dose of eculizumab on 27th of march 2024 uh, even after that her creatinine levels were stuck uh, between 4 to 5 and her urine output showed a progressively falling trend up to 600 so she was given a second dose of eculizumab on 5th of april 2024 
following this by 8th of uh, april uh, she had uh, she had a falling urine output with only 350 ml uh, urine uh, in 24 hours with features of volume overload so she required one se uh, the seventh session of flex along with hemodialysis on 8th of uh, april in view of non recovering uh, renal function and suspected acute cortical necrosis we uh, did a kidney biopsy uh, on 10th of april 2024 Uh, we received two linear cores which comprised of 23 glomeruli one of which was globally sclerosed uh, so uh, few of the glomeruli displayed bloodless capillary loops with fibrillary and foamy appearance uh, as can be seen here also few glomeruli also showed splitting uh, as marked by the red arrow uh, of the glomerular capillary walls which was prominent under the silver stain tubules showed mild acute tubular injury in the form of uh, dilation and uh, loss of brush bordered epithelium uh, as is marked by the uh, black arrow here there was mild mo lymphomononuclear inflammatory infiltrates in the interstitium and blood vessels showed occluded lumen with fragmented red blood cells uh, in occasional vessels thickening of vessel wall was also uh, also seen along with myxoid uh, degeneration as uh, here it is marked the glomerulus is showing uh, the fibrin thrombi and uh, fragmented rbcs in the uh, glomerular capillary lumens this is the electron microscopy of the same patient showing patent capillary loops although but there was subendothelial widening as marked by the blue arrow with uh, increased uh, mesangial cellularity as marked by the uh, star capillary uh, loops showed uh, obliteration by subendothelial widening although the podocytes were unremarkable so her immunofluorescence showed no immune deposits for igg igm iga c3 c1q kappa or lambda so her native native kidney biopsy was reported as suggestive of thrombotic microangiopathy with no evidence of any cortical necrosis in view of this her plex was intensified and she received further courses of plex uh, over the following days with a third dose of eculizumab uh, being given on 12th of april even after that uh, on 21st of uh, april uh, the patient had uh, accelerated hypertension with seizures visual symptoms blurring in the form of blurring and flashes uh, with uh, likely due to press and she had features of volume overload requiring hemodialysis and few sessions of iso uf so uh, 13th and 14th session of flex were done but the platelet counts uh, started to fall in view of suspected hematological relapse uh, the flex sessions were given uh, later her anti cfh levels uh, came out to be normal so plex was withheld and the patient was given the fourth dose of eculizumab uh, on 29th of april in view of uh, for, uh, in view of uh, non recovering renal function and uh, low platelet counts after which the platelet counts have shown recovery and the urine output has also improved to more than 1 liter in 24 hours so as of now the patient is in hematological remission with blood pressure controlled on anti hypertensive drugs seizures controlled on anti epileptic drugs and a stable creatinine uh, and she is dialysis independent so this is our experience with patients with atypical hus in sgpgi over the last 5 years we had 73 patients out of which 57 fulfilled the criteria for inclusion in the study and out of out of them 42 were treatment responders and 15 were treatment uh, non responders so this is comparative data uh, the point to be highlighted is uh, anti cfh positivity was seen uh, more associated with uh, the subgroup of responders rather than non responders these are the biopsy parameters most of them showed no significant difference but uh, it was seen that uh, patients who were who were non responders showed moderate ifta as compared to those who had uh, those who were responders showing only mild ifta this is a survival uh, uh, curve comparison showing that patients who were anti cfh positive had better dialysis free uh, renal survival and patients who were responders also showed better survival so overall in our study we found that the factors predicting poor outcomes in atypical hus uh, are as follows uh, age more than 18 years female gender and the presence of seizures uh, were predictive of poor outcomes uh, although anti cfh positivity was not uh, associated with any significant uh, difference but it was seen that anti cfh titers of more than 4000 had 18 times more risk of uh, having a poor outcome thank you